Oh, we look to the sun Set our eyes on our Savior See the image of love Sing His praises forever Oh, we look to the sun Oh, we look to the sun Tearing through the dead of night See the kingdom burst into color At the speed of light yeah. Freedom Shaking up the atmosphere As the shadow fades into nothing As the day of Beyond the skies above, now reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on our Savior, see the image of love, sing His praises forever. Waking up to kingdom come See the hope of heaven Shining like the rising sun Now forever Lifted up from death to life There's no fear in love And the darkness in his endless light Jesus Beyond the skies above, love reaching out for us, the everlasting one, Jesus our God. Come on. Oh, we look to the sun, set our eyes on our Savior, see the image of love, sing His praises forever. Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you guys had a great holiday. My name is Abed and if you're new here, we're so grateful to have you here with us today. I'm gonna share a few announcements, so please stick with me so that you guys know how to get plugged in. The first announcement is that we have these online devos going on throughout the week. Devotionals are basically ways that we can learn more about the Bible and hang out with our tribe groups. For more info, make sure to contact your tribe leaders and if you're not a part of a tribe yet, then make sure to message in the chats and or in our Zoom room. Next up, we got Friday Fuel. Every Friday, we either play games, watch movies, or just hang out in general. Uh, make sure to follow our Instagram account at thecollective.youth to stay updated on how we'll hang out this coming Friday. And lastly, we have these TCU services every week, same time, same link, and also come join us after service to play some games. And that's all for the announcement. Let's begin the sermon. Hey guys, happy Sunday and happy New Year's. I hope you guys had a great New Year's Eve party. I hope you guys made your resolutions. And so as we are entering this new year, we're gonna start a new series on vibes. So it's basically the vibes we feel, the emotions that caused it, and the situation we're in. So I want you guys to imagine this. 
um, waking up in the morning, getting ready for school, following all the rules you have daily. Sometimes it can get really annoying. I know I don't like it. And parents telling you to do your homework after school and teachers telling you to study more so that you can get better grades or being controlled, basically. Nobody likes it. Um, we all want to do what we want to do. We want to hang out with our friends. We want to have fun, play video games. I know a lot of you guys um, like to play video games, especially during this um, Corona season because you're at home all the time. And in my house, when I was younger, my parents would get really annoyed when I go home too late, when I was out uh, playing with my friends too late. Or if my brother keeps on playing his video games the whole day. Or if my sister is on her phone and playing TikTok all the time and doesn't engage with the family, and my parents would get really mad. But this is all part of being human. So even though we don't like being controlled and we want to be free, we want to do what we want to do, in some way or another, we are controlled by our emotions, by our moods, and basically our vibes. So how many times have you seen people let their emotions get the best of them? Or maybe you realize that your emotions have got the best of you. So maybe you are arguing with your parents and then you got grounded and your anger took over. Or you said some terrible things about a person because you let jealousy took over. Maybe this person earns better grades than you, does better than you, or got something that you wanted for Christmas. So when emotions take over, we don't make the best decisions. In fact, I want us to think of a negative emotion that just keeps coming to us, that has the most control over us, something that always takes over when we're facing troubles. Um, maybe this emotions for you can be anger, it can be guilt, it can be anxiety, or jealousy, or loneliness. Well, for me personally, it's sadness. So when I get hurt, or the, or the smallest thing hurts me, um, I just cry. And then when I'm disappointed at something, I cry. Even when I'm mad at someone, I don't yell at them, but I cry. And even when I'm happy, I also cry tears of joy. So I actually have my own experience of how I have let my emotions control me and get the best of me. So this year, I had just turned 17 earlier this year, and I had got my driver's license and started driving on my own. And I felt really independent. I feel so grown up and I feel like I can do anything in this world. And so my friends were also experiencing the same thing. And back uh, a few months ago, I was in Bali with my best friend. And then we had a really tiring day. We were, uh, we were out um, exercising at the beach and then we surfed the whole day and it was really tiring and we are hungry after a long day and we wanted to get dinner. So if you don't all already know that the roads in Bali are really small, so it's really hard to drive in. But at that time, it was really, it was pretty late at night. It was pretty dark. And then we were about to get out to the main street and we had to reverse the car from where we were parking it. And so when we were reversing the car, we had to make a turn. And then somehow, because it was dark and we were tired and hungry, um, we got stuck in this position between a pole and like a wall. And so we were panicking because if we move forward, we would hit the car. And if we would move backward, we would crash the car. So basically there was like, we felt like we were in a dead end and there was no way out. And so at that time, um, with me letting my emotions took over, I felt panic. I was, I was, I was, I was worrying about what's going to happen. I was fearful. I didn't know what to do. So I wasn't thinking straight and I just let that emotion control me. And so I was about to cry. I was about to burst into tears. And five minutes later, um, a guy passed by and then he asked us if we needed any help. And we said, yeah, we do need help because we don't know how to get out of this position. And then that guy just passed by for some reason. And so I felt even more panic at that time because why isn't this person helping me? And I felt like there's no way out anymore. And then just after I was like starting to tear up and my friend was asking me, um, are you okay? Because I, my face could like, she could see in my face that I was like panicking. 
And suddenly、um, another guy passed by, a local guy passed by, and he asked us to. He off.、Uh, he offered himself to drive the car and to get it out of the position. And luckily for us, this guy was a driver, and he knows his way around. He knows. To,、uh, he he's very used to driving cars around Bali, and so. He got us out of the position, and I felt really grateful for him because I feel like in the midst of a situation where I'm about to cry and just let everything, let my emotions take over, this guy was just like an angel sent by God. And so my friend and I kept on talking of how like we were so blessed. Jesus has really、uh, taken was really taking care of us at this moment. So. From this experience, I had learned that it's good to name the emotions that we're experiencing, and then learn how to keep them from controlling us. Because when in my because when my emotions control us or our emotions control us, it results in actions that we will re- later regret. From my experience, I regret panicking, and it prevented me from thinking straight to find a solution and to re- realize that Jesus is with me. So. From at that time, the stress felt so real. So I wanted to give you guys a glimpse of my situation back then. So, through time, we've learned to monitor this emotion and cover up when we need to. For example, we let jealousy take control when it comes to an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend, but we don't do anything stalkerish about it because we know that we need to monitor our emotions, even though we might feel that we want to. Or we let anger take control when we're having problems with our friends or siblings, but we try to keep ourselves from smashing things or hitting and punching other people because we know that our actions can lead to terrible things. For me, I always try to hide it when I'm crying. When I'm about to burst out in tears, I make excuses. For example, I have dust in my eye, or I just go to the bathroom and cry on my own because I don't want people to see me crying. And so that's how I just monitor my emotion. So we can monitor our emotions to a certain degree, but sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. But is this really the solution? Should we just keep on letting these emotions get the best of us and think that, you know? At least I don't hurt anyone, or at least I'm not stalking people, or should I always pretend that I have dust in my eye? But this this is not what Jesus wants for us. Jesus invites people to do something that goes beyond mo- just monitoring emotions. If what He says is true, then it has the potential to make us free. Isn't this what we really want? Freedom. Because at the start we agreed that we don't want to be controlled. We don't want to be controlled by anyone or anything, including our emotions, and that is what Jesus is offering us. So I want to talk about a story in the Bible about Jesus and the Pharisees. It says here in Mark seven verse five, "Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands?" In other words, the Pharisees were asking, "Why aren't Jesus' disciples washing their hands before they eat?" These Pharisees, the teachers of the law, are known to be really religious. This may seem gross, but at that time there was very little water supply, and they didn't want to waste it on just washing their hands. But for the Pharisees, it meant more than breaking the rules of hygiene. But were accusing they were accusing Jesus of breaking the law of elders, which was a law that was passed down by word of mouth, and that's really important for them back then. So Jesus answered in a really smart way by quoting the prophet Isaiah. In Mark seven verse six to eight, it says, "Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written: these people's teachings are merely human rules. You have to let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions." In other words, Jesus was saying, "You're not trying to lead people closer to God. You're looking to make power." Pl- Power plays that keep you in charge and keep other people under your control, and that's not the way God works. So then Jesus continued in Mark seven fourteen to fifteen. Listen to me, everyone, and understand this: nothing outside of a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. So this verse basically says that we're not in conflict with God because we accidentally eat the wrong thing or didn't wash our hands before we eat, but. We have to remember that God is way bigger and better than that. We are in conflict with God when what comes out of our mouths hurt the people that God loves. And I want to remind you guys that God loves everyone. 
and I mean anyone. He loves our family, our friends, our enemies, even random strangers on the street. He loves everyone. So everything Jesus taught is centered on that idea, how we love God by loving people. But when Jesus talks about what puts us in conflict with God, he talks about how the source of our offensive words and deeds is inside of us. It comes out from the emotions we're trying to monitor and control. Just like the Pharisees, they were in conflict with God because they let their emotions control them. They let their pridefulness control them. And that led them into trying to control other people. So Jesus said in Mark 7 verse 21, For it is from within, out of a person, person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Isn't it true? Jesus mentions murder, greed, deceit, adultery, folly. Every one of these things begin with just a thought. Your greatest regrets with friends and family were the results of bad judgment. Then you look back and think, why did I do that? Why did I say that? That's folly. Starts with thoughts and emotions and he cares about what could happen as a result of it. So Jesus wants us to love one another, but we can't do it if we're letting our emotions control us. And so for the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk more about these negative feelings and emotions that we try to monitor the anger that we don't have control over, the fear that we look and just wish that we could just chill out a bit, know that Jesus is with us. So for the next couple of weeks, we're going to start paying attention to the world inside of ourselves. Getting used to telling ourselves that these negative emotions don't have to be the boss of us. We're not going to let it hurt other people. Now, here's the reality I want you guys to remember. Emotions aren't always bad. It's a part of being human and they help us figure out to do what's right and wrong around us. But when we, let, when we let it make us do things that we don't want to do and keep us from living the full life that Jesus has planned out for us, then they're not helpful anymore. And remember that Jesus has died on the cross to forgive our sin so we can be freed from a life that is controlled by our emotions. So I want you guys to remember one simple truth. Because of Jesus, emotions don't have to be the boss of you. Jesus is a way better leader than any negative emotions you feel. He can give you the strength to stand up to that emotions that's trying to control you and you can be free. So there are two things I would love for you to try. The first thing is try to think of the top one or two emotion that you have the hardest time controlling. Sadness for me. <laughs> and then these are emotions that control you more than you'd like. Maybe it's anger, maybe it's fear, insecurity, jealousy, greed, anxiety for you. And then these emotions just keeps on showing up, even though you don't want it to, but it just keeps on showing up. And then the second thing, I want you to start checking in with yourself. At the end of each day, before you go to bed or before you go to sleep, or after you're done with everything um, for the day, ask yourself, what did you feel today? Are these emotions mostly negative or positive? If they're negative, what caused it? Finding out what causes them helps us handle them. This may be hard to do because you don't want to think about the negative things that ha that's happening in your life. But over time, we learn to control our emotions, not to be numb to them. Because if we numb our negative emotions, we numb the positive ones out too. And we don't want to be a person that's, that doesn't feel anything. Um, see, feeling is a part of life. But the actions that we do because of those feel feelings show how we live that life. It's either we let our emotions lead us or we let Jesus lead us and help us control this, these emotions. So Jesus said in John 14 verse 27, Peace I leave with you. May peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So Jesus is a better leader than any vibe or emotions we feel. He's worth listening to when it comes to how we handle the emotions we have. Just like the time I was in Bali, when Jesus sent that local to my friend and I, I could see that it was his way of telling me not to overanalyze the situation, not to worry too much, and not to let anxiety consume my mind and soul. Imagine how different your life can be if you are confident that these emotions are no longer the boss of you. Or imagine if your family members also don't let emotions control them. I'm sure this will make a lot of difference. Everything will much be more peaceful. And 
but it's definitely not easy. And that's why, as we have tribes after this, I want to encourage you to talk about how these real life stuff we talk about can actually happen in your daily life. So this week, I want you to be real when it comes to your emotions. This way, if you were to experience negative feelings, you can find the source of it and let Jesus do his work to help you. Remember, because of Jesus, emotions don't have to be the boss of you. So I want to close in prayer as we end today. Dear God, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for teaching us and reminding us that emotions don't have to control our lives and we, we don't have to let it control our negative feelings and let it ruin our day, our situation. We want you to lead us, Jesus, into living the full life that you have for us. So please bless our tribe after this so that we can share about it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So thank you guys for coming today. I hope you had you guys had a great time and um, after this, we're gonna have we're gonna head down to tribes. The link, uh, the details are in the link descri description below. You go check it out. Bye, guys.